Here's the windup. Here's the pitch. Super Friends 1973 Cartoon Explored. Hello friends and welcome to another marvelous video. Today we will be talking about the super nostalgic, super fun cartoon. Yes, we are talking about Hanna-Barbera's Super Friends that ran on ABC from 1973 through 1986 with a few breaks in between. We will be talking about the first season which aired in 1973. Super Friends sometimes gets a poor rap since it is frivolous compared to more contemporary superhero cartoons. But remember that it first aired when action adventure cartoons were unusual. Anything seen as too dark or violent was banned from kids television in the late 1960s. Therefore, Saturday morning programming tended to be all rather funny and light. They even had laugh tracks in some of them. If a child desired anything more action-packed than Scooby-Doo or Popeye, Super Friends was the only option to available when it first came out. Superman, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman were featured on the show along with two typical adolescent sidekicks, Wendy and Marvin, and their pet, Wonder Dog, reminiscent of Scooby-Doo. Apparently, the name Super Friends was chosen from the program because Justice League of America seemed too aggressive for the kids. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. In the great hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes. What the cartoon television series is all about. Super Friends was the new name for the Justice League of America comic book when it was adapted for television by the animation studio Hanna-Barbera, who also acquired the animation rights to the DC Comics characters. It was felt, among other things, that the name Justice League of America would come off as overly nationalistic in the post-Vietnam War era. On the program, the squad did, however, occasionally refer to themselves as the Justice League for a younger audience and to comply with with the stringent broadcast guidelines for violence in children's television in the 1970s. The frequent violence in superhero comics was dialed down a few notches. The idea for a program to properly bring it to life had emerged at the height of comic book popularity. As already mentioned, Superman, Batman and Robin, Wonder Woman and Aquaman were the main characters in the series. These heroes were among the most well-known and recognizable in the history of DC Comics, including Aquaman, whose popularity prompted Filmation to create an Aquaman cartoon even before Wonder Woman. Wendy Harris, voiced by Sherry Alberoni, and Marvin White, voiced by Frank Welker, and their dog, Wonder Dog, served as the team's initial sidekicks. None of them have any unique skills unless one considers the dog puzzling ability for talking as one. The Flash, Plastic Man, and Green Arrow were among the Justice League members who periodically made appearances in early seasons as guest stars. Only one opponent genuinely qualified as a supervillain, a costume genius by the name of The Raven. But because of limitations, the heroes were unable to harm any adversaries. They may at most catch them or prevent their escape. The 80s and 90s kids will be reminded of Captain Planet and how he never threw a kick or a punch. But in the first season, the Super Friends seldom ever engaged in direct combat with their adversaries. The heroes resembled supporting actors in their own sitcoms more than anything else. In most cases, the heroes would focus on adverting calamities, while Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog would really solve the case, identify the culprits, and reveal their schemes. Well, Wendy indeed would do all that. Marvin was essentially a less inebriated and stupider version of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Usually, one of the super friends would catch the villain, and after hearing their tragic tale, the heroes would devise a just solution that was advantageous to everybody. Wonder Dog would then make a fool of himself and everyone would laugh. That was the usual formula of a Super Friends episode. The first season of Super Friends was highly different from later seasons as the plots were really lighthearted and each episode lasted an hour. Therefore, they were drawn out for what felt like an eternity and there wasn't much action. The first episode is perhaps the least watchable by today's standards. Regardless of how crude the other episodes may still have been, it still knocks on your door of nostalgia. 
nostalgia, so it is a fun watch if you are in the mood for old cartoons. The Super Friends get a trouble alert alert about an out of power massive freight train in the Sierra Nevada mountains as they convene for their weekly meeting at the beginning of the episode. To prevent an out of control train from colliding with another train, Superman travels to California. The Queen Victoria cargo ship is in the middle of a severe storm and will be forced into some rocks according to a subsequent trouble alert that the Super Friends get. Aquaman must figure out how to anchor the ship when Wonder Woman transport him there in her thought-powered invisible jet. Batman and Robin are then caught up in the action as they have to save two construction workers when an all-out-of-control crane puts their lives at risk as they are en route to the ocean to pick up Aquaman. As Batman, Robin, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog reassemble, Aquaman successfully anchors the ship with the assistance of some marine life. They see Sir Cedric Cedric, a special inspector of Scotland Yard, who informs them that the British ships have been targeted and that he is searching for the saboteur. In the meantime, Wonder Woman was flying around on patrol when she discovered a dam leak poised to result in a flood. Wonder Woman constructs an earth dam to stop the water, but as it starts to leak, she rams a boulder into it. She is joined by the other super friends who then close the floodgates in order to help halt the delay. Luge. A mysterious shadowy person is discovered when Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog investigate an electricity generating facility during a storm. The youthful heroes encounter Sir Cedric Cedric while pursuing the enigmatic stranger who informs them that the suspect has fled. Later on, we find out it was none other than Sir Cedric Cedric who was the power pirate. It was actually Anthro, an extraterrestrial from the planet Trom, posing as a Scotland Yard special inspector in an effort to steal energy from Earth and transport it to Tron. Yes, one of the most heartwarming moments in this episode is when Batman says, Robin, Superman, and Aquaman to the Batmobile a line from the Batman TV show from the 1960s that we all know and love. The three passengers are then flown to what could be the Grand Coulee down by Superman. They run across Wonder Woman, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog there. As Wonder Woman tumbles down a waterfall, Batman says, I'll catch her, and she responds by saying, thank you. Superman flew Batman, Robin, and Batwoman in the Batmobile into the world's finest number nine. And when I saw this, it made me think of the aforementioned Super Friends scenario. On August 24th, 1974, the 16 one-hour episodes that made up the first season of Super Friends came to an end. Super Friends was, however, brought back because of the popularity of the Six Million Dollar Man and the live-action Wonder Woman series among ABC's primetime audiences. As a mid-season replacement, the first 16 episodes of the show were rerun from February 7, 1976 until September 3rd, 1977. The one-hour episodes were divided into two 30 minute episodes. Did you know? More than almost 30 years later, in Jeff Johns' Teen Titans book in 2006, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog were first introduced to the DC Comics universe. The writer who took over when Johns departed the title two years later would go on to kill off Marvin by a rabid Wonder Dog, no less, and paralyze Wendy. Wonder Dog should not be confused with Dog Wonder, the mascot of Blue Falcon, another superhero depicted on ABC Saturday morning cartoons. This personality was featured on Scooby do. His alias is Dino Mutt and he is a robot. In contrast to Wonder Dog who has no superpowers and is just Marvin and Wendy's pet along with the other Super Friends in season 1, DC also released a Super Friends comic in 1976. The comic books ran from 1976 to 1981. The comic book series is essential for introducing the members of the Global Guardians even though it is not considered official. There are 47 comic book series issues and two special issues of Super Friends in the market. Our final thoughts. It wouldn't be an overstatement to claim that without Super Friends, Batman the Animated Series, 
Spider-Man, or anything else that followed may not have ever been. The program had a larger audience than any print comic book, reaching millions of viewers every Saturday morning. Creators like Alex Ross, Jeff Johns, and Mark Wade have credited the program with fostering, or even creating, their love for superheroes, ultimately leading them into the comics industry and beyond. I mean, if the show didn't matter, I wouldn't be discussing it right now. The chances of a reboot are slim, so we can get into the internet and caress our nostalgic nerves whenever we want. Like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you liked what you saw, please share the video with other cartoon and comic book buffs. Let us know in the comments about any topic you like and want us to talk about. See you in the next one. Ciao.